Natural legs swelling, we saw patients with what? A heart failure. And we did some discussions. We are going to test that. So you are asked to examine the lower limb non neurologically. What is the first thing you do? Talk as though you are in the exam. What's the first thing you do? So, first of all, I wash my hands. Now, introduce myself to the patient and explain the procedure I'm coming to do and ask for consent. I will. I'll position the patient okay. to bind and the leg. I mean, you just position and then you expose the That's patient's right. leg. Mm -hmm. okay. Expose and then I saw the right side of the patient. Okay. So after you position the patient, you're going to stand on the foot end of the bed. Foot end to monitor to just to a general, see the general, a general appearance of the patient. Okay. After you come to the right side of the, the right patient. Side okay. of the bed. okay. So on the right side of the bed. First of all, I have to inspect the the leg. Okay, so first of all, inspection. You began by inspecting the leg. So you inspect both legs, isn't it? Yes. So the instruction was examine the lower limbs non neurologically. Inspect both legs. Mm -hmm. With what? What do you use? Try I use the pen torch. Okay, and then be intentional about it. No? Yes, no, mm -hmm. about it. Ah. Okay. So I use a pen torch to inspect both legs. I'm looking out for blisters. Okay, so she's mentioning something. So looking you mentioned for blisters. blisters. Uh -huh. Looking out for ulcerations. Ulcerations, good. Every, any erythema. Okay, so I think we can just summarize this and say skin changes. Skin like, changes. Okay. okay. You are looking for skin changes. Uh -huh. Skin changes like blisters, uh huh. Mm -hmm. Blisters, ulcerations, ulcerations, uh huh. Erythema, erythematous changes, uh huh. Erythematous changes. Mm -hmm. Is that all? What else can you look for? Hyperpigmentation, all this. So hyperpigmentation and all that. Okay. And then from inspection too, you can see obvious swelling. Yes, you can see an obvious swelling. Uh -huh. All right. Then. Any openings? Okay. Any openings? Any openings you have to touch. Oh, okay. All right. So for that's inspection. Then we'll move so to. So for both legs, okay. Yes. Then we we'll go to palpation. So palpation, uh huh. So we will first check for tenderness. Tenderness, okay. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. So we can start palpating. Before you, you, you touch your patient, what do you do? You mm -hmm. ask whether there's any pain. Any pain. Okay. Okay. And you don't wear a glove. Uh -huh. Okay. The tenderness, uh huh. So with tenderness, and with that, we are checking. We can start from the middle of my legs, mm -hmm. and then we work our way up. Oh, why would you be pressing every every, every part of the tenderness? You just you just, you just press one part. <laughs> okay, yeah. I think what you are trying to do is just the indentation. Yeah, the indentation. Okay. Mm -hmm. What else? Then we check differential wounds. Differential wounds. Okay. What else? We look out for portal of entry. We measure the size. Okay. We measure okay. the size. So with the size. We will locate the tibial tuberosity. We locate the tibial tuberosity, uh -huh. Then we measure 10 centimeters down. Mm -hmm. And from there, we measure the circumference. And then what, what difference is significant? Three. <coughs> More than three centimeters, mm -hmm. okay. So we compare it with the other leg. The, other leg, the same thing, okay. Yeah. And what else can you do? Check for pulses. You yeah. check for pulses, isn't it? Uh -huh. So the peripheral pulses or the regional pulses. Regional. You check for regional pulses. So. Yeah, what what are the regional pulses you check for? We check the dorsalis penis. Dorsalis penis. What else? Posterior tibial. What else? Then the popliteal. The popliteal and sometimes the femoral. femoral. So it's the okay. lower limb. Okay. okay. Uh huh. Uh huh. Then we check the portal of entry. The portal of entry. So you yeah. open the web spaces, you inspect the source of the feet and everything. What and also else? the this part. The we check for lymph nodes. Okay. So regional lymph nodes. 
And sometimes you have to what, check the popliteal fossa for what? And make the nice. popliteal cyst as well. That can point to a popliteal cyst. Mm -hmm. That would be that would also indicate one of the diagnosis. Mm -hmm. Okay. So regional lymph nodes, so that's the popliteal lymph nodes and the vertical group of uh, renal lymph nodes. Okay, then you can you can thank the patient, isn't mm -hmm. it? Okay, so what are the differential diagnoses? So now we go to everybody will give me one. What are the differential diagnoses of a natural leg swelling? Sorry there. Okay, cellulitis of the affected leg. Good. We have superficial chemotherapies. We also have a lymphatic tumor. Yeah, but before you mention that, there are a lot of things. Mm. We didn't saw some of the words today. Okay, years. we have snake bites. Post snake bites. Post, -snake post, -snake bites. post, -snake bites. post trauma. Post -trauma. Post -trauma. Exactly. Before you start mentioning the uh, lymphedema, precox, tartar, whatever you want to do, no worries, it's easy and all that. Okay, okay. so Carlos. Come again. Carlos formation. Yes, Carlos formation. That would be an asymmetric. I mean, it would not be a normalized diet. It is, it is localized to some. Mm -hmm. I think talk of osteosarcoma if you are thinking of that localized. Can okay. you mention epithelial fossils? Yes, it may, it, may, it, may, it may do that. Okay. All right. So, what's, what's, what's invested? Of course, you can have um, um, chronic venous insufficiency. It also have these special varicosities, okay? Mm -hmm. Let me see varicosities mm -hmm. and point to chronic venous insufficiency. Sometimes peripheral arterial disease can sometimes give you natural x -ray. All right, that is fine. So, um, what, how would you investigate a patient who has um, lateral x-ray? Okay, we can do a full blood count. Mm -hmm. What else would you do? Um, we can do, um, if there is an ulceration, we can do swap for wound, wound swap, swap for caution sensitivity. What else? We can also do a blood caution sensitivity. Mm -hmm. and, and then, if you are thinking the patient has DVT, what, what will you say? Okay, for that one, uh, you do the wall score, mm -hmm. you use the wall score, the modified, modified wall score. Wall score. Mm -hmm. If it's um, less than two, you do the D dimer. If, if it's less than two, what does it say? Less than two, that's low, uh, low probability. Low probability. Or, or I think the modified wall score, what they say is DVT is unlikely. Okay, DVT that is it is, unlikely. It is the, the wall score that they say low probability, moderate probability, and then yeah. high probability. Yeah. So, but for the modified wall score, if it's less than, so two is the defining yeah. feature. If it's less than two, yeah. Then wall score is what? And sorry, DVT is unlikely. If it is two or more, DVT is likely. Okay, so if DVT is unlikely, what, what, what do you do? You do the D-dimer. You do the D-dimer. Yeah. And if the D-dimer is elevated? If it's elevated, then you do um, the uh, venous Doppler. Doppler. Exactly. Okay. All right. So um, if the, if the wall score is likely, then you just go ahead and do a venous Doppler. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, can you mention two medications you can use in the treatment of DVT? DVT, okay. Uh, you can use uh, enoxaparin. Enoxaparin, what else you can use? Uh, you can do, okay, pharmacological. Yeah, from medications. Yeah. <laughs> two medications. That's an example for the that's a herb. Yeah. Yeah. What, what else? What, what else? Yeah. Warfarin. 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 Uh -huh. They can give the what? New or the direct yeah. oral anticoagulants okay. like the Rebaroxaban, Apixaban, Dabigatran, okay. all those things. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then uh, from that Parinox and all that. Okay, good. So um, if if you are giving Warfarin, how, 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 would, you, how would you start the, the, the therapy? If let's say the patient has contraindications to all other anti problems, but you want to give warfarin. How would you start it? So you first start it with what? A heparin. So on day one, you do warfarin plus the enoxaparin. And then continue to day two. And then on day three, you do the INR. And when you do the INR, the therapeutic range you are looking for is two to three. Once you get that therapeutic range, you can drop the heparin you are doing, okay. and then continue with the INR. But be making sure that you are what regularly repeating or monitoring your INR. If the INR you do is outside above three, it means that you are over 
thinning or anticoagulating the patient. And if you don't take care, the patient will have bleeding tendencies like an intracranial hemorrhage. So you have to reduce the dose. Mm -hmm. If you do it to you see that it is less than two, that means that the patient is still in the thrombotic, you are not getting anywhere. So you have to so you modify the incentives. Okay. okay. But for the direct acting ones, you don't need any uh, addition. For example, not not all of them do, but for example, the Rauxaban, you don't need any added heparin. And you don't need any what's mon uh, warfarin monitoring. I mean INR monitoring. Okay. That's excellent. So um what, assuming you put the patient on warfarin and then he has toxicity, what antidote can he give? Um, you see that? 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 You we have broken up when she. Why is it okay? Why is it okay? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> you see, that, that's how it happens. So, then you go to the you get Brian. Like, oh, okay, your time is up. It's okay. Then you just step out. First step ahead. So, why is it okay? Oh God, they are so angry with yourself. So be practicing some of these things. Okay, these are very common questions. Sometimes you have to give FFPs and all that. Okay, sometimes you have to give um um. There is this um. I've forgotten. One, one very weird name. It's not used in Ghana, so we won't know that. I forgot what's the name of this name. So Anyways, okay. that is fine. FFP. And then if if you are using an oxaprin or heparin, and then there is there is a a, 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 a toxicity. What what what's the antidote? It's still the same Hey, cool. You can't say you can't say vitamin K. What is the antidote for what is the antidote for heparin? Protamine sulfate. Okay, have you heard of it before? Some have mentioned this. Yeah, I've mentioned it. I've heard it. Over and over and over and over. So, protamine sulfate for heparin, and then um, vitamin K or FFP is for what? But you mentioned vitamin K first, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So, in case the patient has a contraindication to heparin because of probably a heparin induced thrombocytopenia, the patient has a contraindication to yeah, warfarin. What, what, what drug can you use? Fondaparinox, isn't it? Fondaparinox. 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 Okay. That is fine. Okay. So yes. How would you? How do? How would you? How would you? Uh, I manage a patient with cellulitis. So the from the pharynx mm. is a it's also a heparin. No. Oh, yeah. It's a different it's a different drug. It's an anticoagulant. Yes, it's an anticoagulant. It's not heparin. Okay, okay. Okay, it's not heparin. Yes, from the paradox. I, I, <laughs> I mean what? <laughs> what what, what uh, uh, how would you limb elevation? Limb elevation, so not from a college car, limb limb elevation. elevation. What what else? And then also you give blood spectrum antibiotics. What else? Analgesics for pain. What else? Antibiotics. What else? And then you have to do what? Daily monitoring of the to monitor your progress of. And you have to also have to ensure mobilization because what are some of the complications of cellulitis? Yes. Which can lead to a pain. Which can lead to a What else? Sepsis. Osteomyelitis, necrotizing fasciitis, pyomyositis, isn't it? Yeah. yeah no, okay. All right, that is fine. So, um, what what on the examination would suggest? I know I I didn't teach this matter. What on the, on the examination would suggest a rupture in the cyst or a big cyst? Or what in the history? So the patient would typically complain of what a knee pain and then knee stiffness and there was an associated what swelling in the popliteal fossa antecedent to. The development of the unilateral leg swelling. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, that is fine. All right, very good. So I think that should be that for um, what we what we saw yesterday. So the patient with heart failure, yes. So um, what 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 